I, one thing I want to talk about is your woke versus racist video because I think it's way deeper than you might think. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, like, well, tell me what you think. Yeah. All right, great, great. I'm sure that everyone like watching this knows it. Yeah. Sure. So, so, uh, you know, this video, if you guys want to watch, I mean, it was extremely well done. Actually, both of you were in it. Okay. It's pitch perfect. I laughed. I cried. No. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but uh, the reason I thought it was actually perhaps even more deep than you might think is, have you seen the political compass? Yeah. Right. You know, so it's got like authoritarian left, authoritarian right, libertarian left, libertarian right. Okay. Now, to first order, what you can do is you can say that's like uh, communist, fascist, woke, um, anarcho-capitalist, right? In terms of the extremes of each of those four quadrants, okay? Yes. And one way of thinking about the, the last 150 years or so is almost like a Z, okay? Communism happened first. In part, as a reaction to communism, fascism arose. At least it styled itself as, an, as a from communism. And then... In part, as an opposition to fascism, in large part, anti-fascism, Antifa, wokeness, whatever, is down over here. And as an opposition to communism, you have ultra-capitalism down over here. And also as an opposition to Antifa, you've got... So this is the next shoe to drop. Like, Bitcoin maximalism, ultra-anarcho-capitalism is kind of like an opposition. Oh, I see what you're saying. So if you look at just by virtue of, like, a pat, like just some straight up, like, pattern recognition, you're like, it, even then it even looks like it's going to where I'm saying. Yeah, so it's, it's something where... the if you take the political compass, the diagonal axis here, the the woke and the fascists are obsessed, as you point out, with the same things, and often come to the many of the same conclusions. Or, but from the premise, you know, the fascists will say white people are the best, and the woke will say white people are the worst. But they they're just obsessed with race and biology. Categorization. Exactly. That's right. And then conversely, the other axis, the other diagonal, is the economics axis, right? The political power axis, right? And, you know, the communist and the ultra Bitcoin maximalist think, for example, and you, do you know what Bitcoin maximalists are? You're going to hear he a lot more about that. Bitcoin, they're just like they think that what that that's Bitcoin the, is just the only the currency. One. Yeah. If, if, the, if the communist has replaced. He's exposing me with these questions. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> let's say, you know, basically each of these four corners you can kind of see, right? The, uh, the communist has replaced. Um, okay. This is, let me put it like this. There are some folks who have replaced G.O.D. with G.O.V. Okay, the maximalist has replaced GOV with BTC. What's GOV? Government. government. Oh, okay. Okay. okay so government. some have replaced the you know uh, like God with the government. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. Right. Hundred percent. And others have replaced it with um, Bitcoin. Government right? with Bitcoin. And if you if you really want to be flip, it's like the uh, the communists have replaced GOD with GOV. The fascists replaced GOD with DNA. The wokes replaced GOD with BLM, and the maximalists have replaced GOD with BTC. Yeah. Gotcha. Like okay. Michael Saylor. Yeah, that's right. And so the thing is, of course, like BLM, the organization is different than black people because basically, you know, lots of black people don't support, you know, like riots and, and stuff like that. And just like, you know, like the fascists claim to speak for white people, but obviously lots of white people don't support fascism. Right. So these are things where they are like these extreme corners that are kind of focused on there's basically two buttons you can push to make humans insane. And those are like the race buttons and the economics buttons, right? The race buttons is I'm being discriminated. If you just think about it, right? In this corner, I'm being discriminated against or I am like the supreme, you know, race or whatever. These things make people insane if you push these buttons, right? And it doesn't have to be like, you know, uh, white people alone pushing those buttons. In many well, ways, China... Yeah, a lot of it's just like a single, like, you know, uh, palatable answer for why you're having problems right now. Yeah, exactly. And so China's pushing this button of we are the supreme Han race or whatever, you know, pretty hard up over there, right? Um, conversely, the communists and the maximalists, this is less discussed, but you're going to see this happen more and more, okay? If you think about what wokes are doing, they're going and accusing everybody of being racist, sexist, homophobe, etc., without any evidence because there's no penalty for a false accusation. There's like blam, 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 just like firing bullets at people. And if it connects, great. They've got to kill, they gain status. And if not, who cares? There's no penalty for a false accusation, right? What you're seeing now is you're starting to see the emergence of a community that doesn't call people racist, sexist, etc. They call people fraud, scammer, charlatan, shill. Grifter. Grifter, exactly. You're starting to see that ramping. Yeah, you totally are. Okay. And that's a good point. So rather than accusing people. And then you see the right who's always like the left four years ago calling them being like, you're. Or like you're actually sexist, or like uh, yes, that's right, that's right. Uh, like <laughs> the pedophiles, or like they're just trying to. They're, they're always like four years behind, like doing their exactly. Terms. So so just like if somebody goes left, you go right. If somebody is pushing on the race button, people push on the economics button. If they're pushing on the economics button, they push on the race button. Fuck. 
That's okay. true. <laughs> so when the communists push the economics button, the Nazis push the race button. When the wokes push the race button, the maximalists are going to be pushing the economics button. Okay. Yeah. And maximalists and communists, you may not know about. So this. how does how do maximalists push the economics button? Is that how is it so by saying communists? you're a fraud to try to take or your like economic the, mo- so, the fiat so, money's worthless? Well, so okay, so both the no, ma- uh, maximalists yeah, and communists. Sorry. What do maximalists and communists both believe? They both believe that most CEOs are frauds. That uh, you know that l- everybody's out to kind of you know like d- defraud you. That your, your your money is everything. That you need to um, be distrustful. And, and so on and so forth, okay? The communist thinks the answer is for the government to take all the money. The maximalist thinks the answer is for the government to control none of the money, okay? But they overlap on lots of things. Um, for example, uh, because there's only 21 million Bitcoin, many maximalists believe deeply that one person's gain is another person's loss. If you're getting Bitcoin, like, so you don't see crowdfunding very much in the maximalist community. Right, right because it, there actually is a zero sum. There's actually well, and a zero also sum. also, because, yeah, they're always like, because they'll always say, like, hey, you can, in El Salvador, you can buy a cup of coffee with Bitcoin. And they're like, why the hell would I want to buy a cup well, of coffee with Bitcoin? Well, it, it, is, it is something where they, they will, you'll frequently see, see maximalists will talk up some product because it uses Bitcoin, but not actually buy with it. They yeah. want people to sort of be billboards for Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. But they want to, they're just accumulating now, only. Now, I, by the way, I say it this. It is pretty similar. Okay. So I say this as somebody who's like a huge Bitcoin proponent. In the same way, I can get along with a liberal. I can't, in fact, in many ways, I am a liberal. I can get along with a liberal. I can't get along with a woke, right? A liberal is somebody who's like, you know, donating their time to, um, you know, like uh, people and actually doing good deeds. A woke is someone who's burning down, you know, black businesses because of what they saw in the news, right? Like, and well, just, in a lot of ways, you're like a yeah, because you're like a builder, not like a terror down. Yeah, exactly. Like like you know, can I get behind equal treatment under law? Absolutely. Can I get behind that like perversion yeah, of obviously. it, which is which is like in the lower left corner? No, I can't. Right. And so in the same way, like uh, so, I didn't mention one, which is the zero sum. Another is the premise that all companies, all banks, are scams, no matter what. The communists and maximists both believe this for different reasons. The communists believe Yeah, that, that's fuck. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? So, you know, the communist obviously believes it because, you know, these are corrupt capitalists and so on. They believe the government's the, bailing them the, out. The, the yeah. maximists believe it because the government is bailing them out and giving f- them money. Yeah, they get and to... They, they, call they them, can't lose. Yeah, all millionaires... Games rigged, yeah. Ex- games rigged. All millionaires are cantillionaires. Have you heard that term? What's that? No. A cantillionaire is somebody... So the cantillion effect is a real thing where when the government prints money... It doesn't land in everybody's pocket equally. Some people are close to the spigot and benefit from it first. Oh yeah, oh, there's. Oh, I, I see. You were talking about how it depends on where you are placed in the economy because sometimes by the time you get it, it's been four months and now the and price has price all cha- gone up. Okay. Exactly, that's right. And in fact, actually, this is a big part of the impoverishment of the red states over the twenty tens. If you there's a uh, this, this actually came out before the pandemic. Oh, um, all the red states because it was they didn't get the money. They didn't get the printed money. Okay. Because all the money goes to the like, you know, finance people that they're like operating like that. And then so, by the time so here's what happened. Okay. Here's here's like uh, this is see the thing is we can't. It's not like a blockchain where I can actually track it and do the forensics on it. I can't prove this yet, but maybe somebody you know can put together the numbers and show. It's called this a hypothesis, right? But basically, if there's an article in actually the journal Wall Street Journal, which is like. Um, I think it's like Democrat and Republican live in different worlds. Here's the numbers, like 2019. What it showed was that like in the 2000s, there were roughly equal numbers of prosperous and poor Democrat and Republican districts. Over the 2010s, by now, something like 26 out of 27 of the most prosperous districts are Democrat. There's been this enormous shift, right, where the districts that are the wealthy districts are Democrat districts and not over here, okay? Like essentially Republicans suddenly just collapsed and went downscale. Why did that happen? One thesis is that the printed money of D.C. went to financiers who also invested some in tech. It's only a trickle in tech, by the way, because like venture capital is only a tiny fraction of what's in the old old money world. But some did go into tech. OK. And so you had New York and D.C. and tech, Silicon Valley and so on. Those were actually rising in as zip codes over the 2010s, whereas all these guys in the center, uh, you know, all these red states, we're getting effectively diluted down without even understanding what was happening. It's as if you had a cap table with a million shares and like 10 million more were printed 
Yeah. But nobody could see it happening, really. And then and, no and it got awarded in such a way that it diluted this guy down who had 50% down to like 5%. And he didn't even know about it till four months. Till his prices were going up and suddenly the dollar is going less and so on and so forth. And it's not even, it's not visible to him and it's deniable because it's all happening. It's not on a blockchain. You can't actually see what's going on, okay? Now, this was actually up to 2019. Now in the 2020s, we've had even more insane amounts of money printing that make that look like, you know, one one tenth of, of what is happening now. Oh yeah. Okay. There. And so, uh, so I think you're going to see this even exacerbate to a great extent. So what happens is, you have maximalists who will argue, and again, I as I said, I'm sympathetic to some of these arguments, that all millionaires are cantillionaires. Why? Because they just benefited from this uh, printed money. All banks are bailout, bailed out banks. They're not legitimate, right? All these fortunes are illegitimate. All these uh, companies are scams, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, and the entire economy is Would zero sum. Would the argument for them be like, hey, if I was gonna, you know, it's like if you enter an industry and then you enter an industry, other industry where they're like, yeah, the argument would be like, yeah, that's part of the game. You fucking lobby the government and get them to give free money. It's like, you're like, that was part of the game, like going in. And now you're saying, like, oh, they have an unfair advantage. You go, yeah, that's why we went to well, this industry. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? So I, yeah, so, too so, big to fail stuff where it's like, yes. Yeah, so, so uh, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm like, yeah, it's good over here. Become a bank. <laughs> I, so, so I'm, I, I'm, I am generally, I, I understand. I'm not, I'm not saying I necessarily think that. I'm just saying, like, I I, I I understand that argument. I think the problem is basically, I would argue that the government has so much power that lobbying it has ROI. You know, that's like actually the problem. It's like 500k of lobbying gets whatever million of ROI, right? That's actually the bad part. I would argue. But so just continuing. So the maximalist A zero sum. Okay. B they think every millionaire, every bank, and so on is corrupt because of this. Uh, C they think. Um, they will call everybody fraud, charlatan, shill, scammer, grifter. One other thing is maximalists, even more than they hate, um, like, you know, in some ways, fiat currency, they hate so-called shitcoiners, right? What's a shitcoin? The Luna guy. Any, well, well, so that's the thing is, anything see, that's okay, Bitcoin, so right? let's talk, well, okay, right? Perfect. What did Andy that, say? That, I, thought, I thought the maxi say anything that's not Bitcoin is a shitcoin. See, you guys gave, it was perfect. What you just did was perfect. You know why? <laughs> Because he lost his house in Luna. Right. Because the okay, second one. Well, because what would somebody define a racist as? Somebody would say a racist is a genocidal Hitler, et cetera. Okay. Some would say it's a person who asks you curiously what country you came from. Uh huh. Yeah. Where are you really from? But no, but not even that. Not even that. Just like making conversation on the yeah. bus or whatever, right? Oh, right, right, right. right. right? Whereas the use, it's the equivalent is someone says a scammer is the guy that like nefariously like you know takes grandmother's money or and somebody who likes Ethereum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so like part of the, this is actually pretty interesting, right? I love it. Yeah. The, the spectrum is intentionally something where it's so wide to encompass the most innocuous of behavior. I mean, look, we've seen all these articles like, you know, Buzzfeed are specialized, in, you know, Cheerios is racist or whatever. Like you, you could probably just yeah. do, you should do a show by the way, where you just take a hundred headlines, 200 yeah. headlines. Oh, you have that video. That okay. was like a pretty viral one. All right. Okay. I'll go watch it. Basically yeah, yeah. the most ludicrous things, any one of them that charge, maybe you can read the argument. I did a how to blogging too. And okay. like take all the things, but I showed all the articles and be like, here's uh, how to argue something's racist. No, or, it'd be like, you have like a one wheel that's like a noun, one wheel that's like the verb. And yeah, one yeah, wheel that's yeah, like yeah. The ism. Oh, is this the Buzzfeed like <laughs> yeah. throw the dart thing? Was that yeah. you guys? No, no, it was. A, but it's like a, it's like a game. But basically, at the end of it, I used all the real like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Great. whatever. Okay. But. So, so the thing is that part of the game here for them, even though it's not like conscious, is the spectrum is so wide that encompasses all normal behavior. And then you can get tagged as racist and then boom, you're in the same bucket as like Hitler or whatever over here, right? So in the same way- When I'm maybe Himmler. Well, yeah, okay, <laughs> right? So that's like, that's like the biological like attack or the race attack. Then on the other side is like the economics or government attack, right? And so that is something where, okay, there's like an actual fraud or something. And there's like somebody who likes Ethereum or someone who set up a company once. Fraud, right? You know, okay, and, and might say, why, why will fraud expand to everybody who starts a company? Well, now here's where you'll have it's to- effective. Well, so it is effective, but here's where you'll have to, you kind oh. of, uh, you'll have to believe me here, or at least take this as, you know, ad arguendo, okay? Every company is an internet company today. By 2030 or 2040, every company will be a blockchain company because payments, incorporation, equity, wire transfers, crowdfunding, every operation. That is wild though. 
Okay. Yeah, everyone's kids. Like, Dad, can I have some big Bitcoin? Well, yeah, but so, not just Bitcoin, but like every operation that you can think of in finance, in a sense, international law didn't exist before blockchains. Let me explain why I say that, okay? If you are a company in Brazil and you want to acquire a company in Bangladesh, there aren't too many Brazil-Bangladesh acquisitions. To even know what your compliance obligations are is non-trivial. So what happens? Lawyers will basically take a hub country like the U.S. They'll say, okay, Brazil, U.S., that law is established. U.S. Bangladesh, that law is probably established. There'd be in some deals there. Therefore, we will use a U.S. adapter to go between the countries. Okay. Right? I didn't know that. Or China is the other country that does business in like both those countries. So you'll use a U.S. adapter or like a Chinese adapter, typically. Okay? Why? Because now you've reduced this problem of you know end to end of every country versus every country to like one to end yeah right? okay so in a real sense international law i mean there's certain things that you know brazil and Bangladesh will have some diplomatic relations or whatever but for some complicated acquisition who the heck knows you that might be the only one that year okay so the law is verbal it's hard to understand what your obligations are especially if it's in like two different languages who speaks both you know portuguese and you know Bangladesh's language not too many okay um so, you know, Portuguese and Bengali, there's probably some, but not too many, okay? But with the blockchain, a Brazilian and a Bangladeshi could just send Ethereum back and forth. They can interact in the same smart contract. It's all code, which is a universal language of all humanity. So, yeah, I, I, that's another reason why this is replacing, like, the American center of... And the things. Chinese. And the Chinese. Yeah. Right? So this is a de okay. decentralized center, a recentralized center. Anybody can now... I mean, the size of what this does for economic growth is not yet being understood. A group of people from anywhere can incorporate a vehicle on chain with a very fixed and known rule of law. They can issue shares, uh, all this stuff, you know, the... When I say issue shares, et cetera, the existing legal system doesn't like this. The US SEC, et cetera, is fighting, et cetera. Eventually, eventually, as the current generation passes and, and whatnot, just like with the internet, you know, the, the US government fought encryption tooth and nail. And now HTTPS is mandatory for all websites, HTTPS.ci.gov. That's a mandatory thing. The thing that was forbidden is now mandatory, okay? In the same way, eventually, the efficiency benefits of just having everything on chain will overwhelm the kind of stick in the mud legacy regulators who want to maintain their power.